Hello and welcome to Craft Studio. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at creating our menu button uh, to take us from a menu screen uh, into our main game. Uh, the way we're going to be doing this is uh, we've got, uh, here's our, our menu scene and we've got two scenes obviously you're going to need a game scene and this is my game scene and I'll be doing a tutorial for this uh, very shortly, uh, maybe later on this week uh, and uh, you'll have a little sneak preview of what this game looks like uh, right at the end of this tutorial. Uh, this is the scene that we're going to get into, but to get to that scene, we've got a little menu screen and a sort of splash menu, uh, splash image uh, to start us off with. So what we need to do is we need to have three things. We need our background, which is our picture. We need a camera, and I'm using an orthographic camera here. I've scaled it up a little bit to scale 30. And we've got our start button down here. Um, and our start button, what I want it to do is I've got a little rollover effect. Uh, you don't need to do this but you can do so I've got this orange outline and that's actually part of the model so you can kind of see I've uh, I've made the model with a, a little bit of orange around it so if we go back to our, our, our scene our menu I've put that at point 0.4 okay uh, and that hides it inside the background and if I go to point 0.6 we can see it just pushes through. So let's just pop pop it at point 0.4. These numbers are going to be important later on and you'll see why. So the next thing we need to do is I need to actually write a script and attach it to the start button. So whenever my mouse rolls over it, it will create a rollover effect and when I click the mouse on top of the button, it will initialize the next scene. So first of all, you need to create a script. So let's create a new script. Press plus and we'll call it start button and create. So we need to create a couple of variables. Uh, first of all we need to create a model renderer variable variable. And we're going to do that by doing self dot model r big capital R and we need to uh, tell it it's going to be a component of the model renderer with of the self game capital O object okay uh, the next variable we need to do is we need to locate where on earth we are okay so rather than um, <coughs> copying down in the menu where the button is using these positions we're going to just create a variable that's going to tell us all those positions straight away just in case we need to move this about at a later date and the way we do that is we can create a set value of, and we're going to do self dot pause, pause for position, and we need to go to the global position of, and I'm just going to duplicate this one here and pop that in. To duplicate uh, any of these pieces uh, on a Mac, you can press uh, Command D, uh, and I'm sure on a PC it's probably something similar to that. <laughs> Okay, so these are our two variables that's going to help us a little bit later on in this script. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is, and that's on awake, the next thing we're going to do is on update, we're going to create another variable, but uh, we need to create a variable that's going to actually update all at the same time, and that is we're going to need to find out where on earth the mouse is, okay, constantly throughout the uh, throughout this, this, um, this scene. Uh, so the way we do that is we need to create a local variable, and I'm going to call this mouse pause. Okay. And it's an input, so it's the position of the mouse. Okay. To find out where the mouse is at all times, we've created our local variable that's telling us the position of the mouse on the screen. The next thing we need to do is we need to find out whether the mouse is actually intersecting with any of the objects here. Now we've only got one object, which is this down here. So what we need to do is we need to cast a ray. A ray is like an invisible laser beam. Uh, and this is the camera. So the camera is going to be casting a ray through all these objects uh, at the mouse's position. Okay. So this is how we're going to do this. 
So we need to create a local variable called Ray. There's our camera, and it's a forward ray from the camera. Okay, and here what we need to do is we need to go to component because the camera is a component of the game object. So we just drop down the menu here and we put down camera of game object. Now what we need to do here is go to game object. Let me actually say the game object name cam. You need to spell that correctly. So let's just go back into our menu. Yeah, capital C A M. At screen position, and this is where our this uh, updating mouse position comes in useful. So we go here and we pop mouse pause. So that's going to now create constantly a ray coming out from the camera at the at uh, the screen position of wherever the mouse is. So wherever our mouse is moving around, there's a little ray popping out. So then we have to make uh, a condition. So we say if um, I think is it in maths? Yeah, it's in maths. If the hit distance here we go of the ray, so we need to say we've this is the ray through the model renderer of the target and our target is the self so this script is actually going to be inside the start button so we're going to say self model r then we can Set the global position of self game ob object to a vector. So this is just popping it out. So this is creating our rollover effect. So I'm going to put my vector in here from the maths. And I'm going to create three new vectors using this self position up here. So we just do pause. We just we need an X, Y and a Z. So pause X. Duplicate that. Pause Y. Duplicate that. And pause oops and pause Z. And doing it like this, putting a dot uh, and then a, a Z thing at the end breaks apart the three numbered vector into the in its uh, single numbers. Uh, and we need our single numbers because we're going to do we're going to add a couple of numbers to it. So really, uh, if we add a couple of numbers to the start button and we add a couple of numbers to the x y if the z. So if we add 0.2, it goes up to 0.6 and it pops itself out. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do that by adding a number. So let's just pot that in the X, that in the Y, and in the Z. Oops, I'm going to grab it. I'm going to put the, the Z position there, and then we're going to put a number, and we say 0.2. Okay. And once we've done that, that will just, if we roll over it, that will pop it out. Now, once it's done that, it's like, hmm, it will stay popped out. So what we need to do is pop it back in. <laughs> and we can do that with this else block. So we just pop that underneath. Else, and we can just copy all this, so duplicate that. Chuck that back in. We'll, to reset it, we just put it back to its original number. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at what we've got here. So let's push that over. Okay, so we've got our model renderer up here. We've got our position that's locating the game object, which is the button. 
then we create a local variable that constantly updates because it's in the update and it finds out where on earth the, map, the position of the mouse is okay then we create a ray from the camera using the position of the mouse so we're, the camera's projecting that ray and we're finding out where the ray is so there's always a ray then we check to see if the ray goes through the model renderer which is the button and if it does go through the model renderer then we set the global position of the self game object which is the button to all the self positions that it is anyway but we add a little number here else if it doesn't do that, that if then we return it to its original position so let's run that oh actually we haven't attached it to the start button so we need to start as oh, no not no 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 oh yes 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 <laughs> uh, start that start button script close that press f5 to run the project and uh, have a look so there we go so now we have a rollover button so whenever the, my mouse goes over it it's pushing it forward else it's returning it to its uh, original position pretty neat huh so let's turn that off and uh, if we want to actually make that button take us to the next scene we need to tell it to go to the next scene so what we do there is if I go to my administration tab and I go to my game controls I've created a new button here called click and I'm saying click is the mouse button the left mouse button so whenever I left click I'll be using this button so let's go back to start button and I'm just going to duplicate this so the if hit distance I'm going to take away this bit here so I'm going to say if the hit distance of that equals that and I'm going to put that inside another condition which is going to be an input position so if click was just pressed and then and if the hit distance so if I'm actually over the top of the uh, the button then we need to switch to scene now is that in here here it is switch to scene and then we need to go to assets and we go to assets and it's scene so I need to spell it right so that's the the asset up there of and it's a scene okay and if anything works right then we press F5 we go to our our menu so this is our menu screen so it's rolling over nicely let's click it and there we go we're into our game and uh, and that's how you do it and what I'll do is I'll just share I'll share the um, the the pack so you can actually download that little script and then later on this week I'll be showing you how to make this game <laughs> with this tank look looking over action men um, but also uh, this game you know we, we can bump into things we can go around stuff it's got a jump as well so we can kind of jump over the map as well and do all sorts of stuff okay so I hope you've enjoyed that I hope you've uh, and any again any questions and uh, problems leave them in the comments and uh, or join the forums and uh, ask me there until next time thanks for listening Bye-bye.